Welcome back and to the next lecture of energy conservation and waste heat recovery. So, today we will continue our discussion on energy storage especially on the mechanical energy storage technologies and as told in the last class today we start our discussion on flywheels. Okay. So, what is a flywheel to start what I am going to do is I am just going to play a video over here and from this link and then we will talk about it. This kind of in a nutshell captures how a flywheel works and then we will talk about what a flywheel is. Energy storage flywheels have very high performance and work on simple principles. To understand their operation it is best to start with the electric motor generator. An electric motor and generator are really the same machine running in opposite directions. When you put electrical energy into a motor generator it turns into mechanical energy on the spinning shaft. That's a motor. When you put mechanical energy into the motor generator by spinning the shaft, you can draw electrical energy back out. That's a generator. For an energy storage flywheel, we hook a motor generator up to a wheel. When we put electrical energy into the motor generator, it accelerates the wheel, storing that energy as momentum on the wheel. When we want our electricity back, we let the momentum of the spinning wheel drive the motor generator regenerating our electricity and slowing the wheel. Because we run our flywheel in a vacuum and on very good bearings, we don't lose much energy over time. Velkis has invented a new way to make energy storage flywheels at very low cost. Alright, so that video nicely captured how a flywheel works. So, as you can see a flywheel it is a rotating member as we know and with a shaft which can be rotated uh, by using external energy and then the kinetic energy the energy that is stored in the form of kinetic energy can be retrieved later. So, that uh, by and when it is connected to a generator and it rotates the generator. So, that is what we saw there. So, flywheel over here as the schematic is showing it is a rotating device and what is happening is it is connected to a motor generator set. Okay. It is the same machine um, the way you operate it, it it can act as both as a motor and a generator. When we actually supply external energy in the form of electricity it acts as a motor and that imparts energy to the flywheel and the flywheel starts rotating. And then if we now somehow are able to maintain this rotating motion in of the flywheel and later on use that rotating motion and the kinetic energy due to the rotating motion and connect that to a generator then we would be able to extract electricity out of it. Okay. Now, both the input and output to the flywheel because we are using a motor or a generator has to be in the form of AC or alternating current. If you want to have the final output in form of DC or our input electricity is in the form of DC, we would need an inverter or a rectifier as the case may be. Okay. So, this is essentially what a flywheel is. Okay. So, let us quickly write down some, some points on flywheel. Uh, as we know that I would write down something that some of the points that we discussed flywheel stores energy in the form of kinetic energy and this definitely is going to be during off peak hours. Right? And the stored energy is released to run a generator and this is during peak hours. Okay. So, this is what we saw. All right. So, now if we want to do this 
if you want to do some quick calculations. So, let us talk about um, let us just draw this I have an mg set and of course, this is during off peak and the red is during peak. Okay. I would have some kind of a clutching mechanism and then I have this flywheel. and this fellow is rotating. Okay. So, then what happens? What is the kinetic energy that is stored? If I write it as E k, it is going to be half i omega squared, where omega is the rotational speed, angular speed what is its unit radians per second. Yeah. What is I? I is the moment of inertia and for a rotating disc it is going to be half m r squared. So, this is what I am showing here also in the flywheel calculations on the slide as we can see here we have the kinetic energy as half i, I omega squared and the for a cylinder. So, for a solid cylinder or a disc it is half m omega squared where m is the mass of the flywheel. So, if you look at this what are some of the points that we see directly. If you want to store a lot of energy I can do it in two ways one is by increasing the angular speed. Okay. So, therefore, E k is proportional to omega squared is proportional to i. So, if we need to store a lot of energy we want high omega and we want high i clear. Now, for high omega okay, that is good. So, if we need high omega then what happens the good thing is it goes as omega squared. However, we do not need we if, if we have a very bulky flywheel it does not help. Okay. We would rather not have a very bulky flywheel we would like to have it lightweight, but it shows here that if I have to increase the moment of inertia I either need high mass or high radius which means either a heavy material or a very large flywheel which both of which go contrary to what we say that we do not want a very bulky flywheel. So, what can we do? So, what we can do is say this one i omega squared is for a disc or cylinder. Okay. However, if you imagine that instead of a solid disc what I have is you know an annular disc like the spokes of a cycle wheel right. Most of the mass is concentrated along the circumference and then we connect it to the hub by some thin members like the spokes of a cycle wheel of, a, of the wheel of a bicycle which is also similar to the you know the flywheel that was shown in the video that we just saw. You remember it looked like something like this. So, most of the mass was concentrated on the periphery. There was of course, a central hub and then there were connecting rods like this. So, in this case 
i actually is m r square no half all right okay so this is what it is so actually i is as, as you recall from your mechanics it is calculated as an integral over of the mass over the i mean it's like r dm from 0 to r and if you do that for this one since most of the mass is located on the side it becomes uh, you, it comes out to be m r squared clear so if we do this then what happens by without increasing the mass or the radius i directly doubled my moment of inertia okay so i would say is then here go for construction or design with mass concentration on the outer periphery it's possible okay so that is what i'm saying that you can increase so for storing higher energy we increase omega or we increase the moment of inertia by locating more mass towards the circumference all right now what are the kind of uh, omega or the angular speeds that we are talking about if we talk about rpm flywheels can easily rotate at rpms of about 30000 even 50000 in the actually in in, in uh, some of the lab scale experiments there has been demonstrations of running flywheel at even 100000 rpm very high okay so this is how flywheels operate and this is how it stores energy so what we typically do is we use actually use materials with lighter mass and high tensile strength for example carbon fiber reinforced materials why lighter mass as i said we don't need it to be very bulky because remember from mechanical consideration you also have to hold this flywheel in place make it rotate you have to think about bearings and so on so a lightweight flywheel is always good okay even if your mass goes down a little bit what we can do is we can concentrate that mass as we just discussed in the previous uh, bullets we can concentrate it along the circumference and go for a higher angular speed which i said is possible okay why is high tensile strength required the high tensile strength is required because we are talking about very high rpm so there will be extremely high centrifugal force in the radial direction and the material needs to be able to or material needs to be strong enough to be able to withstand these high stresses okay so that is why the material that we used to construct a flywheel is important okay what else is important we will come to that before that let us talk about some of these energy storage calculations continue that so let us say the flywheel was running at initially at n1 sorry n1 and then accelerates to n2 and this is during the off peak hours so then what is the additional energy stored right it is half i omega 2 squared minus omega 1 squared clear now remember what is omega 2 pi n n is revolutions per second or 2 pi f frequency if it is rpm if n is rpm then it will be n by 60 but so n is 
revolutions per second not rpm okay so if this is the case and let us again consider i is half Mm, sorry, let us consider that high is m r squared. Okay. Again, we are talking about this. So, what I will write is half m r squared, where we are using capital R or small r? No, small r, sorry. Okay. Half m r squared, and then this will be 2 pi n 2 squared minus 2 pi n 1 squared. So, I can write it as 2 pi squared m r squared n 2 squared minus n 1 squared. Okay. So, this is what I have written in the slide also. So, this is my energy stored when during peak off peak hours I rotate the flywheel and accelerate it from an angular speed of omega 1 to omega 2. Clear? Now, what happens? Then once I have energized it, I need to store this energy, clear, but what are the problems? If I want to store it, which means the flywheel has to keep rotating and not slow down. Now, is that possible? It is not possible because if I have it, keep, if I keep it rotating, then what happens is it is going to have air friction and it will slow down. There are also the mechanical bearings on which the flywheel rests, right. There is a shaft on to which it is attached and it is rotating. So, there will be some bearings and this bearing will also have some losses. Okay. So, we are going to come to that, how do we minimize those. Okay. But before that, we also talked about the high tensile stresses that results because of this high speed rotation. So, as a result of that, we need to ensure that some, we, we need to ensure that you know the, the stress that is generated is less than the maximum tensile strength that the material can withstand. So, that is what is shown in the second equation over here that if I look at the maximum energy density which is an energy stored per unit mass is related to the maximum tensile strength in this form. So, the maximum energy that you can store per unit mass must be less than or equal to k which is a constant and is a function of the material sigma m which is the maximum tensile strength of that material over rho which is the density of the material. Okay. This directly comes from solid mechanics. Okay. So, we need to make sure that this is what we need to satisfy. If we choose a material, this is what limits the maximum amount of energy that we can store. Otherwise, the material is going to disintegrate because during the rotational motion, it will not be able to withstand the tensile stresses. So, this is where the construction becomes important. The material, the spinning rotor, which is steel or carbon composite, carbon reinforced materials are used because they are strong and they are light. See, steel rotors can spin at around several thousand rpms, but carbon composites can go up to 60,000 rpm. Clear? Let me take a little detour over here. When we talk of flywheel, one of the first applications that come to our mind is IC engines right? as mechanical engineers. Well, the other place where flywheel is used, which these days we do not see in our houses that commonly, but when I was growing up, it was probably common in every household that was the sewing machine with a paddle. The sewing machine also uses a flywheel. Okay. So, that is a completely mechanical manual type uh, that we saw. In IC engines as mechanical engines, when we studied mechanical engineering, we came to know that the IC engine, uh, the 
the cycle counts consists of four segments four strokes okay the suction cup stroke the compression stroke the expansion stroke which we also call the power stroke and then the exhaust stroke four strokes however out of these four it is only the expansion or the power stroke that generates power okay so what happens during the other three so that's where we use a flywheel so during the power stroke the energy is supplied to the flywheel which keeps it rotating and during the other three that energy is extracted uh, by the transmission system and that's how when we ride we don't feel that we feel it's a smooth ride but actually the power is only given at uh, during the power strokes so ideally we should have ding, 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 this kind of a motion but that's what that's we don't see that because it's the flywheel that absorbs the additional energy during the power stroke and then releases it during the other three so that we have a smooth ride okay so that was a little detour but trying to understand how a flywheel works in terms of practical application here we are seeing a completely different application which is energy storage well ice engines is also energy storage but here we are also seeing another example and remember flywheels cannot store a lot of energy okay but however what it is done is it can use to stabilize uh, a system okay when the it 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 supplies that additional energy for a small amount of time so that the system can run smoothly okay all right so let's come back to the discussion here we are talking about materials so steel rotors can spin at several thousand rpm and the reason i i here i take the detour is if you know if you have noticed during when you are driving a car you have an odometer which shows the rpm in many cars it it is there and the typical rpms that we see we restrict ourselves to 3000 4000 that kind of rpm okay actually even if you go beyond 2000 itself it it start the engine becomes a little noisy it's it's quite um, so i mean normally safe drivers don't go beyond 2000 2500 like that okay we change the gear so that uh, we don't go above but however the steel rotors in that is good enough but if we really want to go to like 20000 rpm 30000 50000 60000 then we need this more sophisticated more strong materials which are like carbon composites all right so that was the material now what about bearing okay so bearing the mechanical bearings are not practical because there is friction and the friction is proportional to speed so therefore if you have mechanical bearings to support your flywheel then we are going to lose that kinetic energy okay so that is why we cannot use mechanical energy what we use is magnetic field okay magnetic bearings so one of the examples is magnetic uh, you know the magnetic levitation that we talked about so magnetic levitation is nowadays used even we have trains running on magnetic levitation why so that the friction is reduced so here also if we want to use flywheels for high density storage systems energy storage systems and where we and we want to store the energy for a longer period of time then what happens is we have to minimize friction we cannot use mechanical bearings we can use magnetic bearings where there is a magnetic field okay that supports the uh, the flywheel okay and and there is also this is a little more involved we are not going to go to the details but there is also other opposing magnetic fields to hold it in place because otherwise if you just have magnetic field in one direction it may even fly away but let's not get into those details uh, it is possible to have even magnetic levitation technology to hold the flywheel in place and in that case there is hardly any bearing losses okay the other source of loss that i talked about was air friction so therefore you can operate we have to operate it in vacuum of course perfect vacuum is never possible but we once the flywheel is housed in a chamber which is evacuated so that air friction is very very low okay how long can a flywheel retain its temp retain its uh, kinetic energy well if you have magnetic bearings and if you can maintain close to vacuum conditions it can retain it can it can keep running for almost 6 months it has been shown okay so the storage the period of storage probably is 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 can be quite large if we use flywheels for energy storage okay now one thing that i the last thing that i want to mention however 
is that what if it fails okay what if it fails we have talked about we have talked about uh, special materials that can withstand high tensile strength uh, with high tensile strength etc all that all that is fine but what if it fails because we are talking about something that is rotating at an extremely high speed okay so the good thing is that the design is such that or the material construction and design i am not get, getting into the details but it suffices to know that the construction is such that if the material fails if it breaks or cracks it immediately disintegrates into small pieces so you really don't have a large chunk coming out at very high speed which if it hits something can be fatal at those high speeds so what it does is it immediately disintegrates into small small pieces and then you also have the housing so that these pieces when it goes and bangs against the housing wall the force is not strong enough because the mass is small and that's how we keep it safe all right so once again we started by discussing what is a flywheel so flywheel is a rotating member which can be rotated and uh, which can be rotated and, and accelerated the uh, or basically the angular speed can be increased by supplying additional energy and this we do during off peak hours when we have additional electricity generation so we use it to run a motor that supplies energy to the flywheel so kinetic energy goes up because its angular speed goes up then what happens once it has reached a certain rpm which will be dictated by the by the material's tensile strength and therefore what is the maximum uh, angular speed it can have for a given design we will stop supplying additional power through the motor the flywheel is housed in a casing which is typically evacuated so that air friction is minimized also the bearings are special typically magnetic uh, bearings so that the bearing losses are also minimal so in this scenario when it is rotating at certain rpm it can keep rotating okay without with minimal loss of energy or rpm next what happens is during peak hours when i need this additional electricity i attach the shaft of a generator to this flywheel and so therefore what happens is the kinetic energy of the flywheel is used to rotate the generator and thus produce electricity of course as it as the as it as it rotates the generator its speed is going to come down so the rpm is going to fall from that omega 2 to some lower value let's say finally to omega 1 or even lower we don't know and but that is how we generate that is the amount of energy that will be released all right so the flywheels typically are not used for very high uh, amount of energy storage but it can supply high power in short bursts and therefore it is typically used to stabilize the system um, and and supply that additional burst of energy for a small period of time okay we also talked about its construction in the sense that we typically do not have a solid disk or a cylinder but instead go for a construction where the mass is concentrated on the outer periphery so that way uh, what happens is we can have higher moment of inertia because it goes as m r squared instead of half m r squared in k when the when the cylinder or the disk is solid okay and the other thing from design point of view we would like to have a lighter mass because that is easier especially when you are talking about magnetic field it will be easier to hold the bearing hold the flywheel in its place with a with a magnetic field strength of lesser intensity because the mass is lower and we would like to compensate and have high energy storage by increasing its rpm because today's technology uh, enables us to go to really high rpms in flywheels okay last but not the least the design is such that if it fails it disintegrates into small pieces so that uh, we do not really have very hazardous condition we do not have large chunks of a material at such high speed flying around all right so that kind of wraps up our discussion on flywheel and uh, in the next class what we will do is we will look at another means of energy storage thank you very much